Hey folks, Tyler here with UnderstandContractLawNUN.com. Just have a overview to go over about set off. Now, people have been trying to set off their debts with various procedures and processes that I have been privy to witnessing. Uh, whether you know variety of different processes and watching and witnessing the outcomes and so I have some information to report uh, based on hundreds of real-life examples of what people are able to get to stick what people are able to get to work and uh, what people are having success with now first off I just want to read the definition of the word set off because that's really uh, the foundation of what we're what we're going over here okay so it says in law a set off is a statutory defense to the whole or to a portion of the plaintiff's claim. Now they don't have to be, we don't have to be, this is just one definition, we don't have to be talking about a court case specifically. But a set off is a defense to a portion or entirety of someone else's claim. A set off is the, here we go, the common law right of a creditor to balance mutual debts with a debtor. Boom. Set off is the common law right of a creditor to balance the mutual debts of a debtor. So what you have to do is be in the common law in order to assert this right. And then secondarily, you have to be a creditor. So what does it mean to be a creditor? It means you have to be one issuing money to somebody else. That's what they mean by creditor. You are in the common law and you issued money to someone else in order to balance mutual debts with a debtor. So what that means is someone is owed money from someone else and you're issuing money to that other person or you're issuing an asset. What is the definition of money, right? Anything of value that we can barter, exchange, sell, transfer the titles to, right? So you're giving something else and saying now the mutual debts are balanced. So now I'm demanding a zero balance acknowledgement recognition and I'm not going to pay you or this my my brother here that I'm that I'm helping is not going to be obliged to pay you anything else because I've already set off his or her or its obligation. So that's what you're doing. Okay? Um, party A owes a debt to party B but party C comes in and gives an asset, a money, an exchange, a barter, a transfer of title to party B and then says get off of party A's back. Party A doesn't owe you anything. So that would be if you do it through an accommodation party, um, which it's basically always going to be an accommodation party because <clears throat> we're doing this under common law and most of you guys are dealing with the debts of a legal person that is a citizen of the US, the UK, Australia, wherever, right? And that legal person is owned and controlled and fully regulated and uh, just, just, just completely owned by the corporate government, be it the United Kingdom, Canada, the United States, whatever. So it's statutory. So you can't assert a common law right. You can't have John H. Doe in all capital letters assert a common law right of a set-off. You have to come in as the common law individual, right? The living person, the human, right? Or a common law trust that's been set up because a common law trust is going to be recognized and acknowledged by the courts. Whereas the, the living person, oh, I'm the flesh and blood sentient being that doesn't have a name, that isn't going to fly in the courts because the courts are going to have a really hard time recognizing and acknowledging it. Okay? And you're going to have to have standing. Okay, in their statutory world, they're going to want you to do a motion to intervene. They're going to want you to do um, or a petition to intervene as a third party into this other court case. If 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 you're in if you're in court, okay, if there's, if there's a lawsuit that's going on there, if you're going to assert a set off. Now, if you're not involved with court so far yet, yet, then you're not pressed for time, and you have all the time in the world to work out this process. And so I'm going to go over step by step the entire process. Um, uh, common law right to, to balance the mutual debts of the debtors. So now we understand what that is. In bookkeeping terms, setoffs are also known as reconciliations. To determine a setoff, 
simply subtract the smaller debt from the larger. Any balance remaining due either of the parties is still owed, but the remainder of the mutual debts has been set off. All right, so this is a hypothetical example of um, a, a trust set off process where there's a common law trust that comes in as a third party, as an accommodation party, in order to set off the debts of the all capital letters debtor that has an account with some financial institution or other party, okay? So <clears throat> uh, this is a step-by-step -step overview that we put together. Um, and instead of going through all this step-by-step, -step, I'm just going to break it down and give you an overview. Um, but this is an example of money that the trust has created, okay? This is money, okay? This is something of value. It's the title to something. It is five, if you can see here, it is five trust capital units. Now, you can either be... Uh, capital units or beneficial units. And you should read Weiss's Concise Trustee Handbook. Uh, that is, I mean, there's a, f there's a few of them out there, but you would read Weiss's Concise Trustee Handbook. I think that's how you spell it, Concise, C-I-S-E. Whoops. Um, read that, it's free on the internet, download it, read it, okay? And for people that are, whoops, looking to get a really comprehensive education on trusts, please contact us because there are tons of information on how you can really understand and get a grasp on trusts and how to operate and manage trusts effectively because it's really going to come in handy. So. <clears throat> The bottom line, though, is you've got a trust that issues its own units of interest, or I'm just going to use the term money loosely, and it issues its own certificate numbers. Um, you don't have to have all this on here. A lot of this is optional. You don't need this or anything at all. You don't, you don't need the delivery was by registered mail number so-and-so. You don't need any of that. I just put that on there because it's optional. Pursuant to the Declaration of Trust dated the 21st day of April 2014, creating the above said express trust organization under the common law and in compliance with all the terms and conditions contained thereof, Citibank NA holds, this is incorrect, 5% of Smith Family and Citibank Partnership Trust. So that's what the Declaration of Trust established Smith Family and Citibank Partnership Trust. Why is it called Smith Family? You could really call it anything that you want. You can make up any name that you want. But for the sake of being on point here and explain to you what this is. So John John Henry, John Smith has some debt with some entity, right? And um a second here. All right, so the bottom line is you've got um you know, this debt with John Smith, right? And you've created a trust under the common law. So it's a separate entity and it's called Smith Family and Citibank Partnership Trust. Why? Because look, I'm just in this crazy example, there's a debt owed to Citibank for John Smith, okay? So I'm calling it Smith Family and Citibank Partnership Trust. You can call it whatever you want, okay? And this is a agreement with the trust, well, of the parties of the trust. So you got the grantor, the trustee, the beneficiary. This is not a video, you know, explaining trust that takes eight hours to cover. <laughs> but um, uh, the bottom line is, you're creating um, you're creating five units, okay? And the trust is created. Um, here's another example. Um, I would put this seal on the left side, but I can't I can't format it and drag it over there. Um, but uh, this trust has been established, like all trusts, to gr maintain and grow assets, okay? So in your declaration of trust, there has to be some 
uh, plan of action to maintain and grow assets. And there has to be some asset that's put into the trust. You can put, you know, a box of oranges. You know, you could put an ounce of silver. You could put anything. You could transfer property, titles, money, whatever. Okay. Now, if you want to keep it in common law, so that you have a you have a common law right to do a set off, then you know you want to be dealing with Federal Reserve notes or bank accounts or anything like that. You just want to stay strictly in private common law. But uh, you put some asset. The grantor puts some asset into the hands of the trustee. And the trustee and the board of trustees issues this these certificate units for the beneficiaries. You're going to send notices to the beneficiaries, and the beneficiaries are going to um, one of the beneficiaries is going to be Citibank NA. Why are you making Citibank NA one of the beneficiaries so that you can send them money? And if they keep it, they have accepted, uh, and they have accepted the asset so now you the trust can step in as an intervener or as a third party and assert the common law right of a set off on behalf of John Smith now I know that sounds super stupidly confusing to people that are not familiar with trust and this is why there are there are a multitude of classes and trainings that you can do on trusts that if you contact us we can recommend the best upcoming courses that are the best for you. Um, you can even uh, do a six, uh, one of my mentors holds a six month tr uh, intricate training to learn everything you need to know on trusts. Uh, and it's like, I think it's like $450 a month for like six, seven months in a row. You meet lots of really cool people. You do have to travel, you do have to pay for hotels. So if you're, you know, if you're really tight on funds, it, it may not be for, for you. Um, but if you really want to get, you know, the most awesomest training on trusts, we can hook you up. There's a bunch of different uh, things that you can do. You can also get webinar trainings, lots of things that you can do. So this is a document that the trust uh, puts the registry of all their certificates and keeps this on the trust book, books and records so that they know um, how what percentage of capital units or beneficial units, if they were sent to the beneficiaries, what, what percentage of trust certificate units are owned and controlled by who? And you have the signature here that the trustee you know has signed so that you know nobody's able to counterfeit uh, this and uh, say that they own uh, a percentage of units that hasn't been authorized again this is going to be five percent you know so this is a really slick template here um, you know you could put whatever border around it that you want or not you can do it horizontal you can do it you know vertical where we can change this and we can do land we can do landscape uh, and we can have, you know, we can design this however way that we want to do it. It's your own, the trust is creating its own money. This is private currency, basically. This is its own money. Just like how governments and corp, this is kind of like a corporation creating stock certificates and issuing, this is exactly like that. It's like a corporation creating stock certificates is five percent of the shares of Facebook or Apple computers money yes yes does it have value yes can you trade it yes can you liquidate it into any other form of commodity or currency that you want yes if I own five percent of Facebook how many coffee beans can I get with that how many barrels of oil can I get with that how, ma how many Bitcoin can I get with that how many Dare I say, how many Federal Reserve units right now can I get for that? Yes. How many euros would I be able to trade? 5% of Facebook, if I wanted to sell that and get currency in euros or, or Japanese yen or U.S. Federal Reserve notes. Yes, if you wanted to. Is there going to be tax that you owe? Yes. Okay. But when you're bartering and exchanging commodities under the common law, there's certain tax implications there, so uh, that that you're not subject to if you were dealing with and exchanging Federal Reserve notes in a statutory world. So you really want to learn about trusts if you have an interest in that. But you, but you, you want to you don't want to do it sloppy, and you want to learn and you want to get you know the education. Um, but this is a simple process that uh, that we can uh, we facilitate the uh, people's 
studies and people's, uh, we help people to come up with the answers to their own questions. We give people, you know, some guidance. We bounce back and forth and brainstorm in uh, private coaching sessions. If you go to our website, understandcontractlawonyouin.com, you can go to coaching calls and you can check out the, um, or under all products, we do coaching sessions and we do a variety of other things. Check out our products um, in order to help accelerate and facilitate people formulating processes and so on and so forth. So many, many, many of our students are uh, attempting or trying to set off and discharge debts with uh, credit cards, student loans, etc the list the list the list goes on right and this is a realistic way that would be recognized in the court system many people are trying to issue you know um, bonds off of their birth certificates and trying to do you know acceptances for value and different things like that and I'm not really seeing a lot of that stuff uh, being able to hold up when push comes to shove sometimes the companies will leave you alone and you won't hear from them but um, there's, if you do this pro process properly, right? If you do this process properly and go through this whole step-by-step -step process, um, there, there ain't no way anybody can, can push, you, you know, listen, if you have a court case, you're gonna need to go into the court case. You're gonna need to be confident. You're gonna need to be, um, you know, have some Know that it's all about contract. What the judge says back to you is an offer, back and forth, an offer. What the plaintiff and you back and forth say, it's offer, it's acceptance, it's, it's you know, you have to understand court procedure if you have a court case, okay? So, <clears throat> all right, so depending on if you have a public court case or whatnot, um, are you planning on going in there? Are you planning on uh, sending a conditional acceptance to the court and not go, not making a special visitation to the court? Those are all issues that can be discussed. No case is 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 is, is every case is unique. Is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so I don't want to put out all these generalizations and say, you know, these are the five five steps that you have to do to do this process and for it to work every time. I can't, I can't do that. But with the right head on your shoulders or the right brains to bounce back and formulate a strategy, this is by far the most effective uh, form of money to send to do a set off. By far, by far, by far, by far. Because they're gonna say acceptance for value doesn't work they're going to say all that other stuff does not work. And I believe that the judges are going to agree with it. Because there's a lot of entanglements in order to do those processes. There's a lot of entanglements that you have to do to change your status to not uh, in order to assert those rights in order to do that. So there's multiple claims on your birth certificate estate. There's multiple claims by different state and taxing agencies and, and, and so on and so forth. And if you haven't corrected your status to be a true secured party creditor, then you may not have the right in order to issue those, um, or you may be issuing things that are worthless and don't have any value. Okay. If you have a legitimate trust that's set up that issues like a corporation stock, certificate units and the other party keeps it they have been paid so the whole game is doing that properly um, we have an affidavit of witness so that this uh, document or these documents that are signed between the exchanger and the trustee uh, can be witnessed and you can file a UCC1 non-UCC filing online in five minutes and you can attach this affidavit of witness notarized onto the attachment to the UCC one now creating a record that the trust has been established um, and uh, you can put this affidavit of service in there you can get the you can get the uh, 
signature delivery confirmation you have sent the notice to the beneficiaries uh, form uh, along with these certificate units and you got this really tight record and doing an administrative process uh, with this as your backing is going to be extremely 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 effective when compared to these other processes that people are doing and failing with when they're doing acceptances for value and issuing um, you know set off bonds and different things that I see floating around out there so get with us get with some coaching um, email us get on our email list get on our webinars um, contact us if you need to kick some ideas back and forth and have a facilitator um, with whatever procedure process you're studying or doing um, because this is something that nobody's doing which is infinitely more going to be infinitely more respected and acknowledged by any judge uh, in the world so you gotta get your trust stuff set up properly um, you can order seals from this website custom in and and you're gonna have a you know the official seal of the Smith family and Citibank partnership trust and you know the secretary of your trust is going to seal the uh, stock units which is basically what they are trust capital units or beneficial units um, and it's going to look like a really nice snazzy document you want to do this on really nice paper and you want to send this registered mail so that you're in common law you don't want to send it uh, certified mail which puts you under the statutory domestic postal service not the post office so there's a lot of things here and if you we're going to do a webinar soon that's going to go over and we're going to do a presentation that goes over all of these steps um, but if you're one of our private members uh, we have this whole training and and uh, all the associated documents and step-by-step -step how to do that UCC one I mentioned um, how to how to create a complaint like if, if you send this to the company and they don't zero out your account and they're still lean on your account and they're still collecting we have a sample complaint that you can use in federal court or small claims court because if you open up a lawsuit in small claims court and you are expeditious about it they're probably not going to respond and you're probably going to get a judgment order against them because they're not looking for cases in small claims court for two thousand dollars that you're suing them for but you're suing them for violations of fair debt collection practices you're suing them for material breach of contract unjust enrichment and conversion and so we do have a um, uh, a sample document counterclaim that you can use or adapt to your own case claim one material breach of contract and you're saying that you tendered five certificate units to this company and they kept it you gave them 10 days to respond they kept it and they've been paid you know they've been paid and now they've been unjust enriched and now there's conversion so if you need to use this if you need to if and only if you need to okay so we've got the whole outline here um, your level of uh, your skill level in contract law the operation and management of trusts um, and uh, being able to administer and manage a trust will go up dramatically in, do, in using this process and going through this material. So you're actually developed by going through this process, let's say that you're, you have a process that you're using this on, don't just think about it as setting off a debt, but think about it as now you're learning and you're developing valuable skills in contract law, which may be an asset for you later on in your life. You may start your own business to, to teach people how to manage and administer trusts and to teach people this, like the same stuff that we're doing and understand contract law. So treat it with a lot 
of openness as to possibilities later, future in your in your life, because there's a wealth of a need of trustee management services. Because people don't know how to manage trusts, people need trusts, and they don't know how to administer or manage them. So if you learn this, you've got a whole new career opportunity. So I know some people, you know, there's a lot of steps, there's a lot of detail involved with it. But if you're a detail-oriented person, um, and uh, you really believe in the cause of common law trusts, you know, you can help many people. You can help many people. Uh, we are always offering, um, you know, career opportunities for people that are savvy, that have had experience and successes. Um, so you can contact us, you know, but do your process, get your process to work. We'd be happy to work with you. And um, I really don't see these companies um, being able to have any claim, any standing to come after you for the money, you know, for the, for the balance ever again, because they've been paid. And this is a legitimate form of units. This is a, legi a legitimate asset. This is just like sending, you know, 5% of Apple or Facebook or Panera Bread or whatever company. It's very valuable. It's worth money. Or it is money. <laughs> it's worth whatever the fair market value is, okay? So if your trust is maintaining and growing you know assets from what was originally exchanged ain't nobody gonna say that this is worthless ain't nobody gonna say that this is worthless and we actually have a process where if you if you work with us on this you can be able to have expert witnesses testify in affidavits or even be willing to go to trial and say what are you talking about of course the trust has assets what are you talking about you know, of course, this is a legitimate trust. So, people try to poke holes and stuff. I, you know, I don't see it going to trial, but people try to poke holes and stuff. I mean, it. You know, I, I, I'll laugh at, at at Citibank trying to come back with a response in response to this. You know, I just I just laugh at what they can possibly come up with. If you got everything done properly. Uh, whether it's a $1,000 credit card balance or a $100,000 student loan, I don't see any way that they can get around this. Nobody's doing this. You know, there's not a ton of examples out there of people doing this. Um, so, you know, we invite you to study this process and um, see how that works.